Hey friends, last year I was lucky enough to attend Rails Girls London where I had the opportunity to learn Ruby on Rails. But it used SQLite. I know, boo. But I decided to change it to use MongoDB Atlas instead. I'm Luce Carter, a developer advocate here at MongoDB. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can also take a Ruby on Rails application and make it talk to MongoDB Atlas for storing all the amazing ideas that you might have. So let's get started. In order to follow along with this tutorial, there are a few prerequisites that you need in place. The first one is that you need to have Ruby and also Ruby on Rails installed. And the easiest way to find out if you have that installed already is in your terminal of choice or CLI, whichever term you prefer to use, just type the command rails-v. If you get a response back like this, where you see Rails and a version number, that means you've got it installed. Same for Ruby. If you get an error back, this means that you don't have it installed and links to how to install both of these can be found in the video description. As well as that, you'll need an Atlas M0 cluster, which is our free tier. There'll be a link in the video description showing you how you can create an Atlas account if you don't already have one and also how to set up your free M0 cluster. Great, we've got all the parts that we need in place. Let's get started. It's time to create the project. So we're going to do this from the terminal because it's nice and easy. From our location of choice, we're going to type Rails new. We're going to give a project a name. In this case, we're going to call it Inspiration. And now we're going to pass some options to it. The first option we're going to pass is dash dash skip dash active dash record. What this is saying is that we won't be using the active record adapter to communicate with MongoDB. We're also going to pass the option skip dash bundle. The reason that we do this is that we actually want to go in and add the Mongoid gem we're going to be using to talk to MongoDB before we first install all the gems. So we specify skip bundle and that's all we need. We'll go ahead and click enter. That will then create the application. We can then move into the project folder. And if we just quickly list the files here, you will see that it's gone ahead and created a bunch of files for us. And just like that, we have our project created. Wonderful. Now we have the project created, it's time to start configuring MongoDB. So the first step to do that is to add the Mongoid gem. So Mongoid is the officially supported object document map or ODM for connections between Ruby slash Ruby on Rails and MongoDB and MongoDB Atlas. So the first thing we're going to do is open our project. So here I've got it open in Visual Studio Code. Of course, you could open it in any text editor ID that you like. But we're going to go ahead and open the gem file and you'll see here lots of different lines of already installed gems that come with creating the Rails project. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a new entry. So I'm going to pop it in here after Rails. It says gem, the name of the gem, in this case Mongoid. Now it might try and suggest a version to us. Just ignore that. Just leave it as is and let it decide for itself when we do install. So we're going to do that now. So if we save the file, go back to our CLI, we can do bundle install. So this will go ahead and grab all the files that we need so that all those dependencies are now pulled down that we can then start using in our application. So the next thing we need to do after that then is just run the command rails g mongoid colon config. This will generate the mongoid.yml file inside our application that you can see listed here. And this is the configuration file which defines how we're going to connect to our MongoDB database. So the next step is to configure that. So in order to configure the mongoid.yml file, we can just open it inside of our application. So we can close a gem file. If we go open here into the config directory, you'll see that it's now created that mongoid.yml file. If we open it, you'll see that it's scaffolded out a lot of information. A lot of these are just options that are off by default that you can uncomment to use. By all means, take some time to read through all of these, you know, if you want some more information. But in this instance, we're actually going to delete all this and we're going to just type it out just to make it more readable and understandable as you watch this video. So the first section is development. Then after that, we're going to do clients. And default. So this just sets up the default client. So then we're going to specify a few things about that that we care about. The first one is obviously the URI. So this is going to be an address to your MongoDB environment. So it's going to look something like MongoDB plus SRV. Now this is your connection string and you can get that from Atlas. And I'll link a article down below that shows you how to get your connection string. But once you've got your connection string, you can pop it in here. Now, of course, I'm not going to add that here just because I don't want to give away my connection string, but this is where it would go. 
once you've pasted that in so that you arrive value, we're then going to add an option section. So all we're going to do is we're going to set one which says the server selection timeout. We're just going to make it, I don't know, five seconds. The reason for this is that if it's having trouble connecting, we don't need to spend too long trying. So once you've got all that configured with your connection string and everything, just save that file. Now that we've configured Mongoid by adding the gem and adding our connection string to the mongoid.yml file, we've added a couple of extra moving parts to the application, although we haven't hooked it up just yet and that will come next. It's a good idea at this point to just run the application just to make sure that everything is still working successfully. So we can do that from our command line by running rail server. This will go ahead, start the application, and then once it's running, it should give you a port that you can visit. So in this case, it's at our local host port 3000. So if we click on that, it will open the link or it should. So it's gone ahead, opened our default browser. And as you can see, we've got the Rails logo here and the footer at the bottom. This means that it's successfully running, which is great news. Now we can go ahead in the next section and start to actually link with our idea endpoint and start being able to add ideas to our inspiration database. Ruby on Rails uses the MVC or Model View Controller architecture. So this means that what we're going to do to have our idea endpoint is we're going to have an idea model that represents a document that we want to store, a view to display the idea in the front end, and then a controller that acts as the intermediary between the view and that model. But this is really easy, thanks to the Rails CLI. The Rails CLI makes it super easy because it gives us the ability to scaffold out the file that we want to create. So we can go ahead and do this now for our idea model, which as we'll see, would also create the views in the relevant controller. So we can type rails, generate, scaffold, the name of what we want to create, so in this case it's idea. Then we can give it the properties and their data types that we want to include in the model. So we'll give it a name, which will be of type string. Description will also be a string. And then we'll also have a picture, which will be a string as well. Now this, the intention for this picture string is that it's going to be a URL that we will use later on to display an image. But for now, we're just going to scaffold it out. So if we just press enter here, that will go ahead and generate all the files for us. So you can see there, it's created the file and that's okay. So if we have a look at the code now, we will see that we have in the application, we have an ideas controller. We also have model for an idea that has those properties that we mentioned with those different data types. And we have a new ideas view that comes with all these files. If we go ahead and run this now, it's still just going to show us the Ruby logo. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go into config and into roots.rb and we want to update it so that rather than just being the default out of the box page, which happens to just display that Ruby logo that we saw earlier, it is in fact going to now go to our new ideas page and specifically the index part of it. So we can go ahead and update this. So we can delete this bit. And all we're going to say here is root to redirect ideas. And then we're going to add pound sign or hashtag, whatever you want to call it, index. So what that's now saying is that when we run the application, we want it to default to the index page on slash ideas. Great. So we now want to run this just to make sure that, you know, it loads the page okay. So if we can clear out this and then we can go to Rails server again to kickstart the application. So it's open again. We can click it to open. You can see now that it defaults to this new page. And thanks to the power of Rails and the scaffolding, it's already generated us a page. So we've got the heading here. We've got a link to new idea. And if we had any existing ideas in our database, this would show up here. But we can go in and click new idea and you can see that it's even generated this form for us out of the box with that scaffolding. And because we specified that the data type would be a string, it's automatically gone ahead and even created this form for us. But, you know, it just looks a bit bland, right? We maybe want to spice up the, the design a little bit. So we can close this window. We can kill the application clear this out and now we're going to go ahead and just make it look a bit more interesting. So one of the things that I have gone ahead and done is created a gist here with some code that we can replace the existing code with just to make it a bit more interesting. So the first one is going to be spicing up the overall application HTML. 
So you can see here that we've got an application.html.erb, so embedded Ruby file. So it just looks like standard HTML with some code built into it. So we're going to go ahead and copy all of that. If we go into our code base now and we go to the set of ideas, we go to layouts under views, we can go to application.html.erb and then replace the contents of that with what we've just copied. So that will go ahead and add a nav bar and some other bits and pieces into it, but we still need to add a bit of color to it and everything. So we can update the CSS as well. So we can copy that CSS and we can go into assets, style sheets and application.css and replace those contents again with what we've just copied instead. So we'll just add a bit of styling. Now, as you saw, we've got that form and we've got the page and the, the ideas will show if any exist. So if we go ahead and run this again now, we should see that it's updated with more design and the styling that we've just applied. I'm not a designer, so as you can see, it's still pretty boring, but it's better than it was. And if we go into new idea, we've got that form. But, you know, if we create a new one, so it might be, there we go, follow tutorial, recreate this tutorial, and maybe stick in an image here to something from the Noun project. If we click create idea, that's all well and good, and you can see that it's created it. And if we go back to ideas, it's now in our list of ideas. But it just shows the picture as a string URL rather than actually displaying the picture. So one last thing that we can go ahead and do is we can actually add one final bit of code here, which is specifically for this form. So when we show an idea, it'll actually look a bit more interesting. So again, we will stop the application. We will clear it just to get all the text off the screen. And then this time, what we're going to do is in ideas, we're going to go to index.html.erb under the ideas view, and we're going to replace that with a new code. So one final time, we're going to run the server. We're going to open the website. And as you can see, we just go to slightly better size. There we go. You'll now see that not only do we have the idea with its description, but we also have an image. Great. Now this still has the link, not the picture. So you could go ahead and change it if you wanted to, but we've even got the nav here for a new idea. But at least for now, you can see how you might go ahead with the image tag to grab the URL of the picture and use it to display a picture rather than just the string. Nice. And there we go. In just a few minutes, we've been able to really easily create a Ruby on Rails application for storing their ideas connected to MongoDB Atlas. Let me know in the comments down below whether you are a new or old Ruby developer and also any ideas that you had. As always, all links for the mention in this video and further resources can be found in the video description. Happy coding.